Liberians vote tomorrow Tuesday in a runoff election between President George Weah of the ruling Coalition for Democratic Change, the CDC, and former Vice President Joseph Boakai of the main opposition Unity Party. In the October 10 first round vote, Weah narrowly beat Boakai 43.83% to 43.44%. There were a few problems associated with the first round of the polls, including 114,000 invalid votes nationwide. National Elections Commission NAC Chair David Etta Brown Lansana tells me that everything is in place for Tuesday's runoff. The commission is very well prepared for the 14th November presidential runoff. I say this to say that we have all the money that we requested that was budgeted uh, for the process. Uh, you know that uh, our entire budget was uh, 53 million. So we have received all of that money. We also say we are ready because our ballots arrived in the country last week and they were deployed to the field. We are in the process of deploying staff to the various polling stations and uh, we've conducted civic and voter education as well as we have trained our staff in the field to conduct these elections. That is the temporary staff. So everyone is ready. And uh, we're just waiting for the hour to begin uh, the voting process for the presidential runoff. Madam Chair, there were some issues uh, about ballot security in the first round. So what measures do you have in place to guard against this? We continue to work with the Liberia National Police, that is uh, head of the joint security, usually escort our materials and then they are deployed on election day. Uh, we recognize that is both institutions recognize that we have some challenges with respect to deployment of uh, security personnel at all of the 2080 polling precincts. So we understand that uh, there have been measures put in place to ensure deployment to these areas, especially those areas where we were, uh, that is the security were not really stationary and visible enough to counter any problem on the field. Talking about ballots, uh, there was a huge number of invalid ballots in the first round. What do you think accounted for this, and how do you hope to minimize that in this runoff? We announced during our preliminary process of the 10th October elections that uh, we encountered some 114 plus thousand invalid uh, votes. And we anticipate that with the increase in civic and voter education, uh, where we also deployed some of our permanent staff to the field to show people how to mark the ballots, we anticipate that the invalid votes would be lowered for uh, the runoff. We also noticed by way of some of the discussions around town that during the 10th October polls, because there were many ballots, and uh, a large number of candidates, especially for the presidential ballot, which uh, was some 20 candidates. Some of the voters just got weary and, you know, didn't really know what to do. So now that we have just two candidates on, uh, you know, the ballot, perhaps maybe this could be an indicator that uh, some of the invalid votes would probably not occur during this time. So before I let you go, uh, Madam Chair, uh, there were some disputes arising from the first round I am talking specifically about the complaint filed by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Bookfall Chambers, concerning his defeat or uh, supposedly defeat and allegations that uh, he was inciting violence in his district. Have you been able to resolve these uh, disputes and how how much do they impact the runoff? What I would say to you is that uh, our hearing office, the records in there have shown that about some 50, that is five zero complaints were recorded uh, from the 10th October pool. As at now, more than 20 of these cases have been closed, either by dismissal, withdrawal, resolution, or abandonment by uh, complainants. But currently we have uh, senatorial and representative electoral cases ongoing. So I will not speak specifically to the case that you uh, have cited, but to say that we are hearing them and that, uh, you know, those rulings uh, based on evidences and what have you will come about either from the hearing office or when they are appealed to the Board of Commissioners or when, in fact, 
they are appealed to the Supreme Court of Liberia. So we're doing our best to get rid of these cases, to hear them, but I will not be specific as to uh, which case uh, you are alluding to. Madam Chair, thank you so much. Uh, a pleasure always to speak with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, James, and have a good day. David Hester Brown Lansana is the chair of the National Elections Commission of Liberia. She was speaking with me from the Liberian capital, Monrovia. The European Union condemned on Sunday an escalation of violence in Sudanese Darfur region, warning of the danger of another genocide after conflict there between 2003 and 2008 killed some 300,000 people and displaced more than 2 million. A war since April between Sudanese regular army and rapid support forces, paramilitary has destabilized the western region and reignited long summering feuds there. The EU's chief diplomat Joseph Borrell cited in a statement witness reports that more than 1,000 members of the Masalid community were killed in Adnat in Adamta, West Darfur, in just over two days during attacks by the RISF and affiliated militias. These latest atrocities are seemingly part of a wider ethnic cleansing campaign conducted by the RISF with the aim to eradicate the non-Arab Masalit community from West Darfur and comes on top of the first wave of large violence in June, Borel said. The international community cannot turn a blind eye on what is happening in Darfur and allow another genocide to happen in this region. On Thursday, the International Organization for Migration said approximately 700 people were reportedly killed in West Darfur after clashes between the Sudanese army and RSF in El Jenaina on November 4th and 5th. The RSF said last week, it had taken control of the army headquarters in West Darfur's capital of El Jenaina. Lautus has reported that between April and June this year, the RSF and allied Arab militias conducted weeks of symmetric attacks targeting the Masalit. El Jenaina's majority tribe as well fled with the Sudanese army. In public comments, Arab tribal leaders have denied engaging in ethnic cleansing in El Jenaina, and RSF has previously said it was not involved in what it called tribal conflict.